everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I'm a big fan of these TP-Link routers. These are like the little Swiss Army knives of networking. They have a whole bunch of these that they make, and this is one of their newest ones. This is the TLWR7. 10N, and uh, what it does by default is act as just a standard router. So if you plug it into your wall, uh, plug your cable modem into here, it will then allow you to access the internet with multiple devices via its built-in wireless. It's a wireless N at 150 megabits per second, uh, but it also has a LAN port, so you can plug in uh, an Ethernet device as well and gain access to the internet. Uh, so that's pretty useful on its own, but it has a couple of different modes that it operates in. So uh, in addition to being a standard router, it can also uh, function in client mode where it'll connect to your existing wireless network and then allow these two Ethernet ports to bridge to the network. And where this might be useful is if you have like an old game console, like maybe an original Xbox or or something older, uh, you can then uh, just connect its wire to this, and then this will then connect to your wireless and allow uh, that old device to work over your wireless network. So it might save you some money on trying to wire up uh, more jacks in the house. Uh, it also works in repeater mode. So if you're in your house and you have like a, a weak spot, you can kind of put this in between where that weak spot is and uh, where your stronger signal is. You kind of put it in maybe the adjoining room and it'll then repeat the wireless signal that it's receiving. I think there might be some uh, limitations. It might have to be on another wireless end network or something like that, but I, I found it works pretty decently as a wireless repeater, so you can do that. Um, it also works as a wireless access point, so if you wanted to create a wireless network somewhere with an existing wired network, uh, you can switch it into that mode and uh, basically have it be another little wireless access point that you can connect to exclusively. So a lot of neat little features, but that's not all. I feel like I'm doing a sales pitch here, but I really like this device. Uh, there's USB port on board, which will do one of two things. So uh, it will charge a phone. It's, it gives a, a USB one amp output at five volts. So it's enough to charge an iPhone, uh, but not enough to charge an iPad or power an external hard drive. You might be able to get away with the hard drive, but I wouldn't push it. So uh, my advice would be if you're going to connect a hard drive to it, and I'll explain why in a second, uh, you, to use a USB hub that has some external power to it so that you can uh, make sure that you're not overloading the power circuitry on board. But uh, the reason why I bring up the hard drive is that this can also serve as a means of sharing files on your network. So you can plug in, like I said, a USB hard drive or a, or a memory stick and then access those files uh, via a computer just over the, uh, the standard Windows or Mac file sharing, but it also has a little media server on board as well. So um, it supports the DLNA standard. It, I found it was a little flaky with my television and whatnot, but it does uh, it seemed to work pretty pretty well with uh, VLC on a computer. So I'm going to plug this in, though. I wanted to show you the menu screens and kind of poke around, but um, if, if you're not interested in seeing that, I do think it's a good product and uh, one worth considering, especially if you're always finding yourself in need of creating a wireless network on the fly. This can uh, do it very easily. All you need to do is plug it into a wall. So we're going to take a quick break and boot up our computer and take a look at what makes this tick. All right, well, here is the control panel, and this looks like a lot of other router control panels. You get to it just by uh, finding the device's IP address. They do give you the option to connect to like a little domain name that it kind of broadcasts locally on your network. I found it to be kind of hit or miss, so it might be easier just to find its IP address and connect that way. As you can see right now, we have it in its uh, client mode at the moment, so it just connects to my wireless network and allows me to bridge wired adapters to that. But if I wanted to change it to one of the other modes that I talked about, you can do that here. You just go in and uh, just select the mode that you want to use. Uh, the one area I want to look at, though, because everything else is pretty much the same you'd see on other routers, uh, is the USB settings. So you can see here I have uh, right now just a, a memory card on a reader plugged into the USB port on the device. So I've got a, a 16 gig card here. And of course, you know, the, the, the amount of capacity it reads is always open to interpretation. But uh, we've got about 15 gigs uh, of capacity available. And it tells me how much is left on that particular card. And I'll show you how I can connect to that via the uh, Mac operating system in a minute. Uh, it also has this media server option, and it's a little flaky. In fact, I, I found that it, it doesn't always work as well as it should in that it is DLNA compatible, but I often found that you know, if you unplug the router and reboot it, and, and even if everything started up and it should be working and it was set up the same way it was when it was working before, it doesn't always work the second time you try it. So right now I've been, I've been in VLC trying to get it to uh, find it, and I keep rebooting things and trying to reconnect, and I'm just not, I'm just not getting it. So it's had the same problem on my television. It's kind of a, you know, if or that, <laughs> you know, whatever conditions might exist on the network are probably screwing it up. Uh, when it does work, I found that VLC on the computer, whether it's Mac or Windows, I uh, can read most of the files off that card and play them just fine. Uh, what was odd though is that I have um, files that I have played through other DLNA servers on my smart television 
that did not work when trying to play them through the TP link. So I think it might be interpreting these files a little bit differently, or you know, however it's building its, its uh, media database just doesn't seem to jive with, uh, with my television. So this is going to be one of those areas where your mileage may vary. So I don't really recommend it as a DLNA media server, but it is really, really useful as a file server. Um, one caution, uh, the user accounts apply to the entire device. So you can't really specify a way to lock down a particular folder or anything else. It basically, uh, any user that has access to it can get at everything. And uh, the other concern that I have here is that guest users, if they log in with guest and guest, and there's no way to take these people out, uh, they can get in there and read everything. So uh, this is not something that you want to you know, put on a public network. I think you really want to lock down that uh, that file function. So I was a little concerned about the fact that we can't really erase those, uh, those users. So um, what we can do here is uh, connect real quick via the Mac operating system. The Windows operating system will work the same way. Now, what, if you try to connect to this, like if you try to find it on your network when you plug it in, a lot of these new drives now, they just show up as a device in your network. Like I've been really raving about the WD MyCloud lately. That just shows up on my network. I can click on it and find it. Um, the the uh, TP link doesn't broadcast itself, so you have to know where it is. So we're going to connect. I went up here to go, uh, connect to server, and I have to type in SMB, which stands for the Samba protocol, uh, and this address, which is my local IP address for that device. And it takes a second. Um, ask me for a username. So we'll just say, uh, I'm just going to log in as admin because I have read and write capabilities on there. Uh, and then I'm able to connect to uh, that particular folder. And this is actually a digital camera um, uh, thing. So I can just click here and actually play a video that's on, my, uh, on there. And you can see it's going wirelessly. It's able to run this high def video without any jittering or anything else like that. So it you know, works, uh, works pretty good as a little file server. It's kind of a handy, like I said, like, like a Swiss Army knife kind of product. So um, I really like these things. I, there's another one I have. You can check out that review also. Um, really useful if you uh, need to create a network in a pinch and they, uh, they work great. So that's the TP link and I forgot the, fi the uh, part number, but you can look it up on <laughs> attached to the video. And this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching.